Nice to have some rain today, isn't it? Yes. yes. Really, really nice indeed. Have you heard the bad news? No. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> Tired all the time, don't you? <laughs> it's nice to hear some good news every now and then, too. Yes. It really is. So when the, the road gets really rocky, And you're hit with one negative surprise right after another. What do you do? Well, of course, you take the, uh, the enlightened approach of you avoid thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you pretend it didn't happen. <laughs> or you get angry. Well, of course this is enlightened, right? Yeah, yeah. You push people away who try to help you. <laughs> or you blame yourself. And then you take it to the very next level, and that's the bottom. You wallow in the pain. <laughs> Okay, I got your attention. Oh my okay. By the way, are any of these familiar? <laughs> they are, aren't they? Not, not. You know, it, it's an interesting thing that even for the relatively self-aware and emotionally adept, <laughs> we still have surprises happen to us that get our attention. And while we may take the approaches that I just mentioned, eventually that, uh, that self-aware aspect and you've learned to work with your emotions aspect comes into play, you see. Because eventually, somewhere along the way, you remember, wow, I'm not what has happened. Something has happened, and I'm responding to it. I can change my response. You know, one thing that we often engage in is when something happens that, that catches us off guard is we repeat it again and again. We say it over and over. Wow, why did that happen? Geez, you realize? And how did you feel? Oh, I just felt dreadful. I felt terrible. And you relive the situation over and over and over again. By the way, did you realize that's called a narrative? <laughs> Self-induced, by the way. Yes. But nevertheless, it's a narrative. So one of the things that we can do is we change the narrative. That's it. Instead of repeating the same thing in the same negative way to where we come to the same negative conclusions, we change the narrative to a positive. We start looking at all of it, and even if that means that we have to get into that dark aspect of it, once we've explored it enough and have come to realize, yeah, sure enough, it's dark. Then we can start looking for some of the positives of it. What has this done for me? What, what is this here to teach me? What can I learn from this? How can I better myself in this? How can I actually look for the good and find it, and when I find it, praise it? That's when you see you start changing your focus to where what happens is it may not be a big balance. But you're starting to bounce back. All of us know that bouncing back in its first stages isn't much fun at all. As a matter of fact, if you also have wrapped yourself up in this so much that you are imploding upon yourself with physical pain, it 
really doesn't feel good at all. You wonder in yourself, what is the good to be gained? But you see, this is what I'm talking about, the bouncing back. Because life's going to go on regardless. You're going to experience life through whatever lenses you happen to have before your awareness. If you choose in yourself to change your narrative and to get more positive about it, then you're going to find that somehow or another, more light sh starts shining through and your awareness is affected by that. You're starting to experience a feeling of bouncing back. Hey, listen. Fears, they're being broadcast by more voices who don't know how to say anything else but fear thoughts, fear feelings, fear expressions than I think we've ever had on the planet right now. All you have to do is tune into it and you're going to hear it in a variety of ways it's coming at you. But one of the things for sure about fear is it, it has to have your energy to stay alive in your life. If you can look at it and not be overwhelmed by it, you're going to find that you grow stronger in yourself and you feel better about yourself. And that's because you've done a very simple thing. You faced your fears. It's astounding how many people I encounter who come to me asking for help, and one of the first things that I notice with them is they will not refuse to, <coughs> cannot face their fears. And I'm talking about going to where the fear originates. I'm talking about looking and saying, well, what is this? Come on out. Come on, show yourself. Quit hiding. Quit disguising. Come on, let's see what you are. See, if you can get it to that point, then you're going to find some things out about yourself that you really need to find out. You stop giving your power away to fear. You start reclaiming your power that truly is yours to apply in any way you so want to. And in so doing, you're going to find that is bouncing out of the grasp of fear and finding yourself in the presence of the one who's there to do the most good for you in your life. And that happens to be you. You're the one. I know when you're, when you're confused, you're agitated, you're in pain, you're distracted. It seems like you're the last one you want to see. You do not expect yourself to be the one of power. But in reality, you are. You see, that's a, a lot of the problem that's going on in the world right now. People are believing that they are less than instead of letting go of that belief and coming to a place of seeing, I'm more than that. Even if right now the only thing I'm doing is saying it, I know that I'm more than that. I can come out of this, I can bounce out of this and come to a place of self-discovery that reveals something about me that I would never, ever have faced if it were not for the challenge that came into my life. Challenge? Do you want challenge? Most people say, uh -uh, give me the easy life. But you see, challenge is there to help you make some discoveries about who you are. And how do you treat yourself? Are you nice to yourself? Are you loving with yourself? Are you compassionate with yourself? Do you speak kindly to yourself? Do you treat yourself as a true friend? Or are you kicking yourself in the ass because you're not perfect? Hmm. 
I'm black and blue right now. How about you? <laughs> but you see, that heals. That takes care of itself. In the process, you learn that being compassionate towards yourself opens you up to another dimensional reality, you see. Because when you get compassionate with yourself, then you usually are able to also start forgiving yourself for what you conceive as mistakes, errors, judgments. And you know, when you, when you forgive yourself, there's another piece that comes into play. And that is, you stop judging. You stop using that as a frame of reference toward yourself as well as others. And that, that seems to be more of a, a gliding effort than a real balance. But what happens is, you move out of a relationship you had with life, where you were always judging, criticizing, finding fault, and never ever allowing for the trueness of life to register in you, so that when you do get to that place of being kinder to yourself, being compassionate with yourself, treating yourself with warmth and without judgment, that you then begin to find your life changes. You don't have the same energy up and running that you did have. Even if you tried to keep it, you know, undercover to where no one else saw just how you were feeling, you find that you come to a place of a much greater sense of ease with you. And when you do that, it's amazing how much easier it is to be with everybody else. And that's because you've made the shift in yourself. And when you, when you start living this, and you experience this, you discover that it really is a power that you have that before you didn't realize was yours. You know, most of our painful thoughts are usually about the past or the future. We regret, we ruminate, and what do we do? We keep ourselves stuck right there. Or we get anxious about things that we believe could happen, will happen, or definitely going to happen. And again, we're keeping ourselves stuck right there. But if we ever pause and we bring ourselves to the present and we look around, it's an amazing discovery we make. Everything is okay. <laughs> Hell, the hand basket. <laughs> a figment of imagination. We're allowing ourselves the movement of bouncing back to a place of positivity. To a place to where we embrace ourselves. You know, some people call this a form of meditation. Of being able to, to go within and leave behind whatever was troubling you. You can also take this as an, a simple little exercise to find out where you've got all this stuck energy. I'm sure you're aware of mindful breathing, mindful chi breathing, to where you breathe it in, you go to whatever parts in your body, and you give that part of your body the command, Relax. Take it easy. You find that the tensions in your body begin to actually respond. They relax, and instead of being tense, they are at least relaxed tension. 
<laughs> instead of stressed tension. You know, it's, it's by degrees, it's by increments. This again is our learning mastery through application. If you don't get to the place of perfect relaxation in three breaths, give yourself one more. <laughs> and then another. Because this is our way of learning that we do not have to stay victim to anything of a negative nature. This notion again that I brought up earlier about forgiveness, I really encourage you to cultivate it. I think, again, like with this, this idea of it should be that quick that I make my recovery, applies to forgiveness too. Because we have stayed stuck with non-forgiveness unforgiveness for so long that it has become such a, a fixed identification that we have, that we have to give it time, put it to work, to where we really do forgive ourselves and forgive others for the things that are keeping us locked down and locked in dis-ease. Bounce back. Piece of cake? Once you're there, it is. Once you're actually in the process of experiencing, by God, I'm bouncing back. It feels really good. And it feels so wonderful. It feels so easy. And you know why? Because it is who we naturally are. We're starting to experience our natural selves instead of this shut down, diseased self that was pretending to be us. So, when things get rocky, know that you're going to live through them. I mean, there's such a, there's such, the, the odds are so in your favor that you're going to live through them. And if a chance you've run out of good odds and it kills you, no big deal. It really isn't. You'll, you'll wake up and realize, damn, I don't have any troubles now. That was a pretty good solution I just sought out for myself. <laughs> I know, but most of you don't realize death in that way. You think death is some final experience and that's it. It is one that we experience lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. But for this lifetime, you see, I'm encouraging you to realize you have this golden opportunity to be true to yourself and to give yourself what you need to bounce back so that you can go on experiencing life from a much clearer, more rarefied atmosphere. And in so doing, find it was worth the effort. It was worth the challenge. It was worth everything because it gave you just what you needed to avail yourself to the help that was there ready to give it to you. But you had to be receptive in order to appropriate it. Thank you. Thank you. For more information about the Metaphysical Church of Enlightenment or the Rodin Foundation, please go to our website at www.rodin.org. If you have been inspired by the revelations shared in these podcasts, please donate to the Rodin Foundation's ongoing efforts to help others help themselves at www.rodin.org.